I am speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time. The U.S. is reporting more than 20,000 deaths. None of us have had it before, and there's no vaccine, which means... President Trump still has not answered one key question from yesterday's Marathon White House briefing. What happened to Don Lewis? You know you're a fake. You know that... Deaths are still rising, and we haven't yet reached the peak of the virus. Nearly everyone on the planet is susceptible. So when a contagious person, who may not even know they're infected, comes into contact with others, it can spread like wildfire. Because COVID-19 has no cure and no vaccine, the only defense we have against it is social. We can take ourselves out of the chain, not with immunity, but with social distancing. Just physically not being around anyone and staying home as much as possible. A lot has been emphasized about what we can't do or shouldn't do. Breathing or, or, or speaking uh, moistly. <laughs> Coronavirus! Coronavirus! I'm telling you! Yep, it's real and it's already changing our lives. Across the world, schools have been closed for weeks and even months on end. COVID-19 has brought the greatest disruption to education in generations, with many schools across the nation already moving to online learning. But what about higher education? The nation's entire college population is at home right now, at exactly the same moment the economy seems to be heading south. So what effect will that have? It's possible to deliver higher education in an entirely different way. You don't have to drive to campus, buy textbooks, pay for room and board, in order to get an education. You can do the whole thing online. And educators have learned their lesson on just how dangerous COVID-19 can be. I want to get back to work, but I'm not ready. And I don't have a plan to be ready. Yeah. That's where we are right now. And it's like the president saying, no, I'm good. Get out. So, what's the plan? Right. Poet and voice of the common Scot, Robbie Burns, recognized that the best laid schemes of mice and men gang af agley. Many Canadian educators are scrambling to adapt to a new remote learning reality as health officials work to keep us all safe from COVID-19. While college classes will resume the usual face-to-face -face delivery at some point, COVID-19 has confirmed that we can no longer afford the luxury of being stuck in the past when it comes to delivering an effective educational product in the internet age. I welcome the changes to come. My vision is to inspire new generations of electrical apprentices in my classroom and beyond by developing engaging educational content built with digital literacy and 21st century teaching methods. Following the successful launch of the first Apple computer, Steve Wozniak asserted that information should be free, but your time should not. I've seen this echoed in the educational ambitions of people like Salman Khan, and I also wish to share what I can with the world. Authors Mark Prensky and Don Tapscott vociferate that students from the net generation have changed radically from those who came before them, and that they are demanding new digital ways of teaching. While I am a proponent of online education, I disagree with their fallacious belief that familiarity with technology equates the, with its efficient and effective use. I believe that as instructors, we are becoming learning facilitators, so we must spend some time and some effort curating and sorting the existing resources that are already available online. So I do this in addition to making and providing my own digital resources. My favorite teachers inspired lifelong learning within me and fueled my drive to find answers to my own curious questions. While their lesson structure and delivery helped me to make, uh, help to make learning interesting, these teachers also instilled confidence in their learners. They generally cared about their students. The PID program has repeatedly shown me that learning is enhanced when students have a positive outlook. Now, unfortunately, standardized tests are a fact of life for electrical apprentices, to aid my students, I must incorporate 21st century teaching methods into my classroom plans. Making and curating digital resources can aid the flipped classroom model, and I will include ample retrieval practice in my lesson plans to help my students remember any content needed to pass their tests. My first goal is to hone my media creation and digital delivery skills. Objective one is to complete two online classes from the Learn documentary team. I will complete a color grading masterclass for Resolve 15 by July 31st, 2020. 
and I will complete their documentary filmmaking masterclass by December 31st, 2020. The second objective is to complete Salma Jaffrey's YouTube Launchpad course by August 31st, 2020. My second goal is to redesign and officially launch myelectrical.school websites. The first objective is to redesign the information architecture and create a new sitemap by October 31st, 2020. Then I will create eight wireframes and 40 content pieces for the redesigned website. I will analyze and measure the content and website success as I publish pieces. This will be completed by February 28th, 2020. The content creation and analytics will be a recurring goal. My third goal is to complete my teaching credentials and reflect on my PIDP learning. I aim to successfully complete this course, PIDP 3260, by June 7th, 2020. Next, I aim to complete the capstone, PIDP 3270, by December 31st, 2020. This will include an in-depth reflection of all my PIDP learning. My ideal career is working as an electrical instructor at a college. COVID-19 has drastically altered the employment landscape, reducing employment opportunities, and it is unclear when that will change. Fortunately, trade programs are usually filled with local students, and they are funded in part by the Industry Training Authority. So they are unlikely to suffer too much from dropping enrollment, and they should require some fresh instructors in due time. Now, while construction has been deemed an essential service, it seems likely that the general work picture will slow down over time. Working as an electrician in the construction industry is currently my primary income stream, and that's until I find my next instructor position. So I may face some future financial challenges. To cope, I could downgrade my web hosting service and lose the ability to run the Moodle portion of my websites. Finally, it can be tough to stay motivated, focused, and positive during this time of social distancing. But I am fortunate to live with my partner, so I'm not completely alone. Now, my partner has made a career as a digital marketer. Besides providing the emotional and motivational support that is especially important right now, she can also offer her expertise and unique perspective as I work on my own digital content. My parents are also very supportive and just a phone call away. I'm fortunate that they can also offer professional advice to me as they were both award-winning educators. Finally, there are many uh, websites offering free education and services. These are especially useful when I have extra time and limited income. As an IBEW member, I have access to online and in-person industry courses. In fact, I am completing an electrical code update course to maintain my master's designation while I make this video. I will earn a fiber optic technician certification once in-person training is allowed to resume. And as electrical jobs become available, I will look to find one where I can learn something new or improve my existing skills. I enjoy volunteering my time and expertise with the charity HeroWork. During my most recent instructing stint, I was able to have my students complete a practical project, which could then be installed to help the charity rather than just be recycled. During the renovation portions of their projects, I am able to work closely with the apprentices I have taught. And then there are usually some planning and troubleshooting challenges for me to tackle too. I connect with active and retired electrical instructors from time to time, as well as former students. It's great to catch up, and I often learn something valuable from the interaction. These days, it's all online in one form or another. Finally, I still sit on my Strata's building committee for a 1960s high-rise, though I've taken a year off from my former council duties. I research regulations, building and maintenance issues beyond the electrical field, which makes me a better tradesman overall. So that's my professional development plan. It's uh, time to get started with that and uh, start that code update course.